Hello and welcome to the Instant Insights podcast. At Global Data Thematic Intelligence, we track over a hundred tech, industry, ESG, and macro themes impacting all major sectors. I'm Shraddha Sabu, and today I'll be delving into the colossal risk threatening economies and societies across parts of North America and South America this summer, the intensified 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. Every year, from June 1st to November 30th, the waters of the North Atlantic Ocean enter a singularly turbulent period, one where tropical and subtropical cyclones are most likely to form over the ocean and strike cities across the US, Mexico, countries in the Caribbean and Central America. In the past, this has included Hurricane Katrina, which claimed almost 1,400 lives and cost an estimated $190 billion in damages. In more recent years, Hurricane Harvey battered Greater Houston and Southeast Texas in 2017 with more than 9 trillion gallons of rain, costing more than $150 billion in loss. Climate forecasters have predicted that the 2024 hurricane season will be more intense than usual due to a cocktail of weather conditions and record-breaking ocean temperatures. Joining us to shed light on these impacts is Dr. Nicholas Leach, who is a hurricane expert and climate scientist at ClimateX, a global climate risk analytics provider that helps institutions to analyze the impact of future extreme weather events and build resilience. Dr. Leach specializes in quantifying the impact of climate change on storm systems globally and is also a researcher in extreme event attribution at the University of Oxford. Hi, Dr. Leach. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing today? Yeah, not too bad. Thanks very much for for having me on. It's great to have you on the podcast. Could you tell us how exactly do hurricanes impact economies and societies? So hurricanes have very kind of far-reaching consequences from the kind of immediate effects that probably spring to mind when you're thinking about hurricanes. So things like wind damage affecting roofs or potentially causing even more destruction of like property and um, infrastructure to the more kind of indirect effects, such as things like long-term economic impacts on local communities. So this was a particularly important one for Hurricane Katrina, which which has actually seen that the city's population drop quite significantly after Hurricane Katrina and hasn't yet recovered back. So that's a kind of long, much longer term impact. You also have to think about things like a potentially outside of your control. So recently we had Hurricane Beryl that affected Houston, where it didn't cause huge amounts of kind of immediate damages, but it did affect the power systems in such a way that many people were left without power for kind of weeks potentially after the event actually occurred so that's a kind of less controllable thing that you have to think about when you're when you're thinking about hurricane right and what is different about the 2024 atlantic hurricane season essentially the the 2024 atlantic hurricane season is expected or has been predicted to be particularly active largely due to a combination of of two features that are very like very strongly influenced Um, Atlantic hurricane season. So this year we've got record sea surface temperatures in the North Atlantic and in the Gulf, which, and so just to kind of provide that link, the energy that hurricanes use to kind of produce the the extreme wind speeds that they do and then the associated rainfall are kind of fueled by high sea surface temperatures. And so effectively the hotter the sea surface, the more intense a hurricane can get. And so this is why people are are like, you've probably heard about this season being a potentially, particularly active season. And it's also a La Nina, which Again, typically, the Nina seasons are associated with higher rates or higher frequency of hurricanes in the North Atlantic. The forecasts have suggested that this could be a particularly active season, and therefore a particularly important one for hurricane impacts. In fact, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration National Weather Service is forecasting a range of 17 to 24 named storms, of which up to 13 could become hurricanes and four to seven storms could become major hurricanes. As of August 20th, there have already been five named storms, Tropical Storm Alberto, Hurricane Beryl, Tropical Storm Chris, Hurricane Debbie, and the recent Hurricane Ernesto. Beryl was a a Category 5 hurricane that occurred in June, which is a a record-breaking hurricane in terms of how early um, a Category 5 hurricane has, has been seen. And that's another way in which we would, like with warmer sea surface temperatures, these storms can, the, the season can basically extend. Ian Palau is Vice President of Strategic Energy Services and in-house meteorologist at Power, an energy and utilities software provider. 
He specializes in commodity risk management, weather derivatives trading, and has 20 years of experience in the energy and utility industry. He described what he'd witnessed in terms of hurricane impact in his home state of Texas. Even something as minimal in terms of strength as Harvey was devastating. I, I personally know folks who had to flee from their homes because of rising water. And that was just basically a small system, but it dumped so much water that the infrastructure just couldn't handle it. From an economic standpoint, sure, there are those businesses that are going to do well, such as home improvement centers, uh, places that sell building materials. But the vast majority of folks and businesses, they're shut down for a week or, or longer, depending upon damage. And depending upon the time of year and what their businesses are, that could be devastating. So when you consider a place like Galveston, which is very beach oriented and summer tourism oriented, uh, being down for three weeks in the heart of summer, that can be very rough for those folks and, and those business owners. Not to mention the personal struggle that people that go through that have to deal with, where your life is completely upended. And what are the impacts of hurricanes on the energy industry? I've, I've been an energy portfolio manager uh, for the last 25 years now. Um, there's many different parts of the quote, energy industry. So the, the first part that people will think about, that's the local utility level. So as, as we saw with Beryl, uh, that storm came in, uh, knocked down tons of poles and power lines and transformers. Um, it took a large feat of, of work on behalf of Centerpoint and, and their various vendors to, to bring everything back up to where it was before and also to make it stronger. I think the numbers were, they had almost 2 million people without power at first. And by the end of the first week, I think it dropped to a little over a half a million. And then by the week after that, it was down to 100,000. Or so that's a lot of work when you consider how many poles and how many miles of wires need to need to be strung. So for a utility, it's it can be a devastating impact, and it takes a lot of physical work. Um, one other part of the energy field uh, that people may think of is oil and gas drilling and processing. That typically happens in the Gulf of Mexico from the Texas coast through Louisiana. With Hurricane Katrina, that really cherry picked and knocked down most of the weaker rigs. Um, so a category three storm coming through the Gulf now would probably not cause as much devastation because those those rigs are just simply newer and stronger. Now, what it would do is cause temporary shutdowns as rigs evacuate their personnel for the short term, for maybe a week or so. So there are shutdowns that, that happen. Um, one thing in that part of the energy field, our, per, our reliance upon offshore natural gas is a lot smaller than what it used to be. There was a time, call it 20 years ago, that the U.S. received 25 to 30 percent of its natural gas from offshore because of the various shale plays within, within the continental U.S. Um, that percentage of offshore gas has been lowered to like three, four percent. Um, so in terms of the cost of natural gas, any particular hurricane is not going to have the impact on the cost on the open market of natural gas as it used to have. So those are 
two instances within the energy industry per se. Um, there's the there's a third part of the energy industry that it could have an impact, and that is in the retail electricity space. So there are quite a few states in the U.S. where electricity is deregulated, um, which means you can buy your your power from any quote, middleman, New York, Texas, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, there are there are many states that are that way. Now, granted, they buy their power on the open market, and it is generated from the local utilities, definitely. So there is that connection. But on the, on the open market, when a when a hurricane hits a metropolitan area, because of the power lines that get knocked down, people aren't using the electricity that that they would have been. So what typically happens is that the prices drop because the demand is not there. And that happened in Houston with with Beryl. Electricity costs for any particular hour during that hurricane span dropped into the twenty to thirty dollars per per megawatt hour range, uh, which is much lower than normal, and that's because there was demand destruction. While power systems are one of the first to be affected by hurricane landfall, businesses across sectors have been bracing for impact. Bloomberg has reported that issuance of catastrophe bonds, which are issued by insurers, reinsurers, and governments for disaster coverage, has hit a record high due to the expected hurricane season, 38% higher this year through May than over the same five-month period in 2023, which was already a record, according to Artemis, a compiler of data on insurance-linked securities. The $4 billion worth of catastrophe bonds sold in May represents the greatest volume of catastrophe bonds ever sold in a single month. For example, the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association recently sponsored a $1.4 billion cat bond, its largest ever. Palau explained how businesses can be protected from the risks of hurricane impact. There is a field called weather derivatives trading where we can do a financial transaction that will help businesses. So there's there's a financial trade called a cat in a box. So as as you know, hurricanes are are graded category one, two, three, et cetera. So uh, a business owner can put on essentially a insurance transaction that says, if a category two hurricane comes within a certain geographical location during the months of say August and September, I can pay such and such a premium to get reimbursed so many hundreds of thousands or millions of of dollars, depending upon the the size of the transaction that the business owner wants to put on. Um, So, even though it doesn't stop the hurricane, it it limits the financial risk. The weather derivatives are the most direct uh, way. Uh, it's it's more of a cleaner hedge. in In the trading world, uh, we have a, I'd say, a qualitative grading system when it comes to hedges. Are they clean hedges or are they dirty hedges? Um, with with dirty hedges, there can there can be a little bit of financial slippage where the impact to your business may not be ninety or a hundred percent covered. It might be sixty or seventy percent covered. So by a a a dirty hedge um, outside of a cat in a box type of scenario. Um, one can do a a rainfall type of hedge where whether it's caused by hurricane or just by summer thunderstorms you can you can do that uh and be f- financially um reimbursed and the reason why i say that it's dirty is because not all hurricanes create a huge amount of rainfall in a certain spot Many do, but they don't have to. Um, If a hurricane is very fast moving and it doesn't linger over a particular area for for a long time, the rainfall is likely going to be a lot less. 
or if the hurricane isn't as geographically large, less of an area will be impacted. For companies directly exposed to risk, specific disaster preparedness plans are also crucial. So there are there are a few ways. So yeah, that um, companies can adapt and kind of prepare for this. One, I mean, the first and most immediate um, way in which like companies and businesses can prepare is to be a, try and understand and be aware of the risk and take it into account. So this is something that like the company that I I work for, Climate X, can help businesses with and in particularly in the financial sector is provide information like quantitative information about your risk from hurricanes not only at the moment but also into the future so that that's kind of step one is to try and understand your risk that the next steps is to try and actually use that information to to form things like disaster preparedness plans so if a hurricane if a severe hurricane impact or like severe hurricane were to hit the area immediately surrounding like where my business is ha- my, my business is interested in like what impacts could that have so for barrel that would be things like anticipating power systems going down and then working out what your business can do to try and mitigate those effects so that's kind of in a in terms of an event response trying to understand what you can do in order to basically not make it as bad as it could be um but then also longer term so this is another aspect of of something that climate x actually does is to try and help real estate companies understand well if i'm going to develop an area in a an area that is at risk from hurricanes what measures can I introduce into the, the planning of that development such that they might not affect it as, as basically as badly as they would otherwise? So things like storm shutters to try and reduce damages from, from high winds or flood defenses to try and reduce damages from storm surges and like rainfall induced flooding. And so those are the kinds of things that I would I would suggest businesses to, to be aware of. Um, but also, you've, I think. In that understanding, you've got to also understand that with with your kind of emergency planning and disaster preparedness is that you can't, there are things that are out of your control. Things like in Hurricane Barrel, this loss of power was something that probably most businesses couldn't actually control, but should try and be aware of and understand what the, the impacts might be and how best to mitigate them. As the climate crisis intensifies, the hurricane season might spell increased risk for businesses in the future. I asked Dr. Leach about the forecasts for the Atlantic hurricane season going forward. Although I've said that hurricane kind of projections of what is happening to hurricanes in the North Atlantic are very uncertain, there are some features that aren't complete, like that we know that we have more confidence in. So things like we expect the the rainfall from from hurricanes to increase with climate change, with global warming, you'd expect the rainfall to to increase, and so that kind of flooding. From like like we saw during Hurricane Harvey, like extreme um, rainfall induced flooding, we would expect that to continue to increase if global warming continues to increase um, into the future. And other things like sea level rise, which although like very far up predictions are very uncertain, we'd expect basically we expect the direct we're pretty confident in the the direction of sea level rise, so we're expecting the sea level to increase with glo- with increased global warming. So that's another thing that businesses can be can be more aware of and. We define a hurricane season to be particular between these months, but as sea surface temperatures in- increase, that season is going to expand. And so people have to be aware that the risk isn't zero outside of the season. And we might see more of these kind of very intense hurricanes earlier in the season and also later. As to what I was saying about, about the season specifically, I don't think it's quite yet lived up. It hasn't been incredibly active or produced really high losses yet but in my view it's still too early to call that like we we tend to not see the peak of hurricane activity and until a bit like essentially later on in the season so it's it's definitely too early to call it and say this season is not going to be as active as as the forecast has predicted we are now almost halfway through the season which is expected to peak in september as we sit here in mid-august we still have another good two months to go Keep your eye on the oceans. Let's see what happens. Thank you very much for listening in to our Instant Insights podcast. 